Okay, brilliant. Well, as usual, good morning, good evening, or good night, depending on where everybody is in the world today. Um, this is going to be a pre-recorded interview with Rain Del Rumpel for the simple reason that the tech gods and internet gods were not on my side today. And our Instagram live hit several little issues, unfortunately. But Rain, thank you so much for bearing with me and being here with us today. How are you doing? I'm great this morning, Stefan. And is it Stefan or Stephen? It's Stefan, actually. More like the, um, I think, the German way or the Dutch way of saying it. Yeah. Stefan. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's important to get that right. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, so thank you so much for joining us here today. But as always, I, oh, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, as I always say to my guests for the Wellness Lifestyle Conference interviews, before we get into the nitty gritty of what you do, I'd love to hear a little bit about your background. What brought you to your current paradigm? Like, what was your journey like that got you here? Okay, for sure. Well, um, we would go back to just a little over two decades, mm -hmm. nearly going on three now. Uh, when I was raising my children and I began working with school systems, um, helping them to identify at-risk children and running programs to help to heal the family and bring in resources and, and offer them tools and help them to uh, recover as well as gain, you know, a footing and have a firm foundation mm -hmm. for themselves individually, their children and the family system. Um, going, going further along, I was then brought into education and teaching. I worked with vulnerable persons. I worked with women, uh, daycares and, um, and ex-offenders. So I've pretty much run the gamut of working with just about every genre possible. Then if you were to look at, well, why am I doing so much, so many things on a spiritual level? Um, when I was a young child, I had a, a trauma occur in my life uh, whereby I went out of my body. And that I believe is when I felt like when I, not necessarily came back into my body because I was very young at that time. So I wouldn't mm -hmm. have understood. But as time went on in my 20s, I started to recognize that something uh, had indeed happened to me, um, not on an actual worldly level. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, you know, that I was that I was different. And I then began having a lot of visions and uh, just really peculiar experiences that I couldn't understand at that time. So that's what kind of segued me into, you know, um, understanding, growing in my own personal development in, in the spiritual world. Right. Okay. So something that I'd like to ask you more out of personal curiosity than anything else, and then I promise you we'll get to the nitty gritty of everything, is at that point, did you find someone to assist you, to actually help and teach you um, to grow your abilities and your talents? Or was it more a journey of self-discovery that you embarked on? It was a little bit of both. So I, I actually, uh, my grandmother, and, and this was even going back to my great-grandmother, my great-grandmother actually used to read tea leaves with all her friends. They'd come over for tea, and it was sort of a pastime for them. Right. My grand yeah, so it was really interesting to find that out. And then my grandmother was psychic, so she often had things come to her in her dreams. Now, keep in mind that uh, that wasn't, you know, a common acceptance right at that time so she did offer and provide to me some insights and some help in that way but a lot of what i uh ended up um you know inquiring on my own and and through my own personal progression was through books through going to groups talking to people i had a, a girlfriend who her and i talked about you know through thoughts and ideas around so it was really quite quite enjoyable in some ways because it was our own personal 
discovery as we were moving along on this journey. Right. That is so incredible to hear. And also, it's so nice to hear it actually mirrored in other discussions I've had with friends and that who say to me, oh, you know, I, I've always had these certain gifts. And, and yet it was always my grandmother who said to me, oh, it's actually in your blood. And no, it was not something we discussed with anybody, but yes, yes it is there. And, and here's how to deal with it. So I, I find that that is so incredible. And here's okay. something interesting. Um, oh, sorry, did you no, have no, something no, else? To no, no, please continue. Um, something, something interesting that I haven't shared uh, as of yet, maybe this is something I can put in my next book, but six months prior to my grandmother passing, um, I started having um, body reactions, I guess you could call them. Mm -hmm. um, I, like a, a sixth sense sort of feeling things started happening to me. Um, and I didn't understand again, you know, hindsight is foresight. I didn't understand what was going on at the time, but I've come to believe and see how what was happening was my grandmother was actually passing that gift, her, her deeper and more intense gift onto me. Amazing. So it was, yeah, it was, what an honor, right. To be able to Absolutely. receive that and to acknowledge it. Right. That's that's and I'm getting chills as I say this, but that's almost not almost it is a form of initiation, you know, into into deeper mysteries. And that's so incredible. And, and something that I feel a lot of our traditions have lost over time because we've we started to disrespect the the more ancient ways and more ancient mm -hmm. wisdoms. So it's so yes. beautiful that you had that experience. And thank you for sharing that, Rain. I really appreciate that and honor that. Mm -hmm. And we really see that, um, how significant, you know, when you're mentioning that almost like a, a denial of, of gifts or a rejection of gifts. Yes. So often, and I'm sure many of your viewers could understand this if they've had angelic experiences or mm -hmm. where they've seen angels or they've, you know, witnessed a miracle or been part of a miracle. Um, I'm, that's actually my next book that I'm writing and I'm you know, through a call out just yesterday, actually, to people to message me so that if they've had, you know, any kind of experiences like that, they can be a part of a collective with me. And what what I've really recognized uh, with a lot of light workers is that, you know, when they do start to come out, and that's prevalent now, just as much as it was 20 years ago, is that there is a lot of rejection from family members, mm. possibly friends, um, you know, the world in general. And I think light workers right now, you know, we're all reaching out to each other for support, especially during this difficult time worldwide. Absolutely. And this is something that I'm seeing so deeply as well is you know, I've, I have such a huge respect for the work that light, that light workers do um, because it's, it's not a, a job that I would wish on anyone because it's such a monumental task. You know, it's, it's literally working day in, day out to raise the vibration of the entire planet. You know, people yes. often ask me, what, what is it that I do? And I say, I'm a shadow worker. And they go, well, well what's that? I'm like, very different to a light worker who's constantly having to do this work a shadow worker more works with people one-on-one -on -one to help them integrate their shadow so that they can become a light worker um which i like to think is a much easier task because i'm not working with the entire planet at once i'm just working but with it's, one person it's a at very time. intense work that you're doing it's very yes. intense because you're getting yeah. right into the root of 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 what's happening and and you make a good point that what, you know, often in most, in most cases, um, these gifts choose us, um, we're called, and it's not necessarily that we choose the gift itself. Usually we are called and, and we are gifted and, and blessed and anointed with these gifts to, to create change, you know, globally. Yes, absolutely. And it's not always something that everyone wants to sign up for. Oh no, I, 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 I can vouch for that. I think in my in my work, I more often than not, even as a child, um, would try and reject my gifts and go, no, no, it's it's not for me. Um, 
And I would have visitations from, I, I didn't know what they were. I, at the time I called them angels. And to this day, I still say that that's, that's what they were um, or are because I still sense them around me a lot of the time. And it was very much this, you have a job to do. And Absolutely. almost the, the sense of, yeah, sure, there's free will, but in this, not for you. You don't get free will in this. You, this is a job you have to do. No, and, and you know, you, you make a good point about you felt like it was angels because you do. Uh, as an empath, we, th there will be a feeling that comes with it. Empaths are very highly intuitive with their emotions. And a lot of times people will try to censor that. They'll try to shut it down. They'll try to shut it out um, mm. because they don't understand it or they don't want that gift because maybe they're afraid of judgment from others or, or whatever, whatever, the, whatever the case may be, yeah. right? But eventually I think that when we really realize the value, you know, this gets back to, you know, my topic is the value of consciousness and the mm -hmm. value of the importance of consciousness and when we realize that we really can't live without it, consciousness is, you know, it's just like love. It is the only thing. And if we do choose to, you know, ignore those messages that come to us from our guides or angels, mm -hmm. or um, it can have some devastating effects on our Absolutely. personal life and on our, um, our safety even to, the, to that degree, right? So it's really important to, like you say, you heard those voices and you, you paid attention. Yeah. It's so interesting that you should say that, you know, you can ignore it, but it's to your own detriment because I always flash back to, I, I was raised deeply Christian. So I, there was one scripture in the old Testament and I'll admit, I'm not a huge fan of the old Testament, <laughs> um, but there was one scripture where God says to the Israelites, I lay before you a blessing and a malediction that you may choose the blessing. And I always took it as a, well, initially I took it as a sort of, oh, but you know, how could God do that? You know, he's trying to force them to do something only to then realize that no, no, he's literally putting a choice in front of them and going, this is what I want you to do because this is going to be most beneficial for you. And if you choose the other path, I'm not going to protect you from the, just like I'm not going to protect you from the blessings that would come your way if you choose the right, right thing. Um, I'm not going to protect you from anything harmful coming your way if you choose the wrong path. But I'm going to try and guide you to the best of my ability without forcing you to do something. And that's very much how guides are. You know, they'll be like, we're trying to push you in the right direction. Please yes. listen up and make sure that you choose the right way. So yeah, I think well, we're always given we're always given free will. And that's yeah. the one gift that God gave us was our free will. And so we do have the will to choose Absolutely. Um, to choose, you know, who we want in our life, what we want in our life, what we will do for a career. All of these things are choices. And really, when it comes down to it, we're only responsible for ourselves at, at, at you know, at the core of, of it all. Absolutely. Right? We cannot. Um, we cannot force anyone else to believe what we believe, just like we're not going to believe what, what, what they choose to believe. For sure. Um, and, but what I really like about um, consciousness and the whole mentality around it and how I understand it is that it is all inclusive. And mm -hmm. so I'm a Christian myself. And so often people, you know, over the years, I've, you know, gotten kicked from the Christians saying, well, why are you doing intuitive work? And then I get from the intuitives, why are you a Christian? Right. So it's, it's this bantering <laughs> back and forth, right? And you understand that. And so mm -hmm. it's really just, it's all about coming to that resolve within ourselves because we, we are first uh, a soul being, we are first a spirit, you know, living the human experience. Right. So once we really, really get that, and it, it might take a lot of reminders and a lot of hits on the head, mm -hmm. a lot of experiences to go through, you know, not trusting the right people, 
um, going through trials and tribulations, all of these things to get us there. And that that's all, you know, you know, I talked a little bit when I did do the um, conference video mm -hmm. about cell memory. And are you familiar with cell memory at all and, and, the, and the value of it? I've heard of it. It's not something I've delved into deeply. Okay, so basically what it is, is, um, you know, we have all of these experiences, like I said, over the years, just as you have had, as I have had, as we've all had, and that lays blueprints on our mind. Mm -hmm. And all those blueprints are stored in our subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. So when we've had all of these experiences, how do we come to when we do start to awaken? So we start to become aware, oh, there's more than this 3D world out here. There's more than just this materialistic plane that we, we live on. There are angels. There is God. There is the divine. There's, you know, the universe and, you know, the movie, The Secret. Right. How we can ask for something and it comes to us. We, you know, a, a, a parking spot close to the building so we don't have to walk far. All right. of these little things. Um, we start to realize in, in our awakening um, that we can create change, that we can change those blueprints by creating a new imprint. Mm -hmm. And so that involves the entire, you know, body, mind, spirit. It involves all of those faculties to come together and the tools that are in, you know, the body, mind, spirit, um, our toolkit, I guess, of, of what, you know, what we can use to calm, and what we can use to um, persevere in, on our life path to create that change that we want to see for ourselves. So I guess my next question is then, and maybe you've actually just answered it, is this very much what you do in regards to when you talk about repathing your life? It's very much a, a whole being perspective. Mm -hmm. So it's all about, you know, what can we do what can we do for our body to make, to make things function better? Because we know what we put into our body affects our mind. We know that if we eat crappy, you know, and we're eating out all the time and we're eating, you know, MS, MSGs and, mm -hmm. you know, just really pouring a lot of nasty stuff in our bodies, our brain is not going to function as right. healthy as, you know, as optimally as it could. It also involves, you know, the spirit. So we need to do our spiritual work, you know, meditation, yeah. you know, visualize, visualize, what do we want? And, and not only that is, is having a connection with the divine, right? How, what, how, however you see, you know, you call it God, Yahweh, whatever, whatever your, you know, those are just labels because Absolutely. really it's all the same energy, right? It is right. It's just. It's just a label that we put on it. So we can just call it energy. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's about, you know, being connected and staying connected. So, mm -hmm. you know, I do a lot of things around tapping in and um, it really is a whole perspective. If you're going to have positive results and you want to be the, you know, master the be very best being that you can possibly be, it means pulling all of those resources in and and using them for our benefit absolutely i love that and i love the fact that you're also what's what i'm looking for so inclusive because the fact that you're not trying to use labels you're able to work with people in their paradigm and then they're able to really like you say tap in so that they can make those shifts and those changes in their lives which i think is just beautiful Yes, because when we when we look at labels, uh, like I, I don't mean that we, you know, just live in denial and we don't look at of things. Of course, no. So if say we're procrastinating, why are we procrastinating? Um, if we're having depression or anxiety, you know, we still have to look at the roots of what is going on. If there's a label there of bipolar or mm -hmm. uh, ADHD, we still have to look at the reality piece to understand you know, further what's going on, right? Right. So we all, you know, we also need to bring that practical piece in to help guide us, you know, to, to help us 
access the tools that are going to work for us and that are going to help us. That is so important. I, I like that point you just made about accessing the tools that are going to work for us because what works for you might not work for me and might not work for the next person. So it's very important to use the right tools for the right job to be able to yes. to say, really be able to tap in. And this yeah. is why in a lot of the sessions that I do, um, we, you know, some people come to me and they want an intuitive reading. That's mm -hmm. the thing that they want. Some people come to me and they're coming from a, pra a practical perspective, you know, oh, my child is acting out and I'm going to lose my mind. What am I going to, you know, what should I do? So it's, it's always about, okay, let's, let's assess first. Mm -hmm. Let's assess, let's look at what's going on. And then what do you want to change? You know, what is your, what is your goal here? And then we can fill in that, that whole gray area with everything that we need to do, which means often, yes, using practical tips and tools to help, but also accessing higher knowledge, you know, with our own uh, higher being um, and connecting with source to help guide us in the best answers and the best solutions that can be beneficial Absolutely. for us. Absolutely. Rain, I'd love to thank you for your time this evening. This has been, or this morning for you. <laughs> this yes. has been an incredible discussion and so enlightening. Again, apologies for the delay and the technical difficulties that we experienced at the outset, um, but we're here now, so this is great. We made it. <laughs> we, did, we made it. Yay, we made it. <laughs> Before I let you go, Rain, um, how do people get in touch with you? Well, they can access my uh, website. Uh, it is under construction and should have all of the new programs mm -hmm. um, and everything uploaded. I would say tomorrow, probably Friday at the latest. I've got a lot of fascinating, uh, amazing projects coming up. I've want, got one called the Angel Project and I've got you know, memberships. So, you know, $320 memberships for $49.97, all kinds of really good stuff. So Fantastic. they can email me at sitebeyondsite222 at gmail.com, or they can visit my website at sitebeyondsite.org. Fantastic. And of course, for those of you who are catching this replay, whether it's on Instagram or YouTube or our Facebook channel, um, please do like and subscribe um, on all of our channels and be sure to catch Rain's premium content on the Wellness Lifestyle Conference uh, website. The link is in the bio on whichever medium you are currently watching this on, whether that, again, whether that's Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, click the link in the bio and you'll be taken through to the Wellness Lifestyle Conference and you'll be able to get Rain's full video there. Rain, thank you so much for your time today. We really do appreciate it. And thank you so much for having me. An it was a pleasure. pleasure. Hope to we have you back soon. We had some conversation. We did indeed. We did indeed. <laughs> I'd love to have you back again soon. So we'll make a plan. Um, I actually am wanting to do re-interviews with everybody again over the coming months because I just feel like there's so much amazing, incredible energy that we are putting out into the world. And I feel like we could share a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day and we will speak soon. Thanks. Bye okay. now. Bye.